1687, Pennsylvania's founder and proprietor, William Penn, commissioned Thomas Holm, Surveyor General, to create a plan for the colony. Following their commercial war against the Dutch, the British captured lands around the Hudson and Delaware rivers. England would control the Atlantic coast in the New World. Penn's father, Admiral William Penn, had left his son an estate that included a 16,000 pound debt owed by King Charles II. Relationships mattered. The admirals with the king and young Penns with James the Duke of York, the king's brother. Through those relationships, Penn secured a charter for land. For England, it was a twofer. The monarchy appeased a growing political force, the Quakers, while securing a new trading partner for English merchants. Penn wanted to name the colony Sylvania, meaning woods, but King Charles made that call. Pennsylvania, to honor his loyal friend, the Admiral. For the principal port city, young William chose the name Philadelphia, one of the seven churches referenced in the Book of Revelations, a place of goodwill and brotherly love. Holmes' regional plan defined large tracts of land beyond the boundaries of the city. The map was printed on seven large sheets then used to advertise land sales in London. It conveyed a sense of the great sweep of opportunity that Pennsylvania represented. Starting with the lower counties, Newcastle, Kent, and Sussex, that later became Delaware, Holm defined the boundaries of three counties, Chester, Philadelphia, and Bucks. As an inducement and promotional tool, Penn set aside 40,000 acres for Quaker settlers from Wales and called it the Welsh Tract. But his hopes for a community there never took root. Another of Penn's promotional tools was the earmarking of tracts as townships reserved for specific groups. For a group of Dutch Quakers from Germany, he created German Township and sold it to Francis Daniel Pastorius. Westtown, Radnor, Haverford, Dutch, Plymouth, and Moreland are other examples of tracts reserved for groups Penn hoped to lure. Holmes' plan for the city of Philadelphia, the famous grid pattern, created relatively equal-sized square lots, each of which would hold one private home. Of course, we know how that turned out. Purchasers cut alleyways and subdivided those lots to make profits from their investments. Though Penn was not that focused on commerce, he did reserve the largest parcel of land in the colony for the Society of Free Traders, a stock company comprised of 200 investors organized by Penn. They developed sawmills, glass houses, and tanneries, but the society later went bankrupt. Society Hill, takes its name from that enterprise. Penn insisted on a huge reserve of property for his family and estate. Several manors were carved out of the plan. At Pennsbury in Bucks County, 10,000 acres along the Delaware supported a rather lavish lifestyle for the Penn family. Along the northern boundary of the city, 1,000 feet wide and running from the Delaware to the Schuylkill, Springettsbury Manor survived in the Penn family until late into the 18th century. Other manors on the plan include Rockland in Newcastle, Springfield, Highlands in Bucks, Gilbert's in what today is Montgomery County, and William Penn Jr.'s manor, Williamstock. Penn created a simple but ingenious deal to attract the first purchasers to his colony. He intended to sell 100 shares, each comprised of 5,000 acres of agricultural land in the counties, a smaller parcel in the Liberty Lands to the north of the city, and a lot in the city, an excellent investment offer. These sales, Penn hoped, would turn the king's debt to his father into cash for himself. In the farthest reaches of Bucks County, no development appeared on the plan. Why? 
because the Lenape, driven north by Penn's settlements and frustrated by failed negotiations, made it clear to Penn and ambitious settlers that they would not be welcome there. Severe consequences awaited those who tried. In the final analysis, Penn's sophisticated vision for development of his colony was unique in the Atlantic world, but it lacked one critical element, roads. Those would come much later and in haphazard fashion. Ultimately, Philadelphia was Pennsylvania's center. The idea for other urban settlements fizzled. But we identify the plan even today as the foundation on which the evolution of this region, Greater Philadelphia, is based. Thank you.